Yesterday, for perhaps one of the few times in his life, 25-year-old Alvaro Orozco uttered the words, I feel safe. The young queer artist and community advocate originates from Nicaragua, a country which he fled at the age of 12, fearing for his life. After almost a month under arrest and almost four years of hiding from the Canadian government, Orozco has just been issued permanent resident status by Citizenship and Immigration Canada on humanitarian and compassionate grounds. It's about time. This is good news, but this case is worth revisiting because it highlights concerns about the refugee claimant process and its negative impact on the lives of queer people who come and make award-winning contributions to this country, like Mr. Orozco has. When Orozco left his country of birth at age 12, homosexuality was illegal there, and as a child, he grew up hearing many stories on the local radio about gay people being beaten, sexually assaulted, and murdered. But the danger was not just something he heard about on the news. Orozco was perceived to be gay by his alcoholic and violent father from a very early age. When the boy was seven, his father gathered all of his sons in a room and said, If I realize that any one of you is a faggot, I will kill you with my own hands. For the next five years, the man beat his child daily, claiming it would help turn him heterosexual. But the Canadian government was not as convinced as Orozco's father. In 2007, Immigration and Refugee Board Judge Deborah Lamont denied him refugee status and ordered him back to Nicaragua. His claim to protection in Canada was non-existent, she said in a hearing conducted via teleconference, declaring the young man did not look gay enough to her. She bolstered her argument by pointing out that Orozco had not had sex or relationships as a teen in the U.S., to which he had originally escaped from Nicaragua on foot as a child before arriving in Canada. It's a bit disturbing to consider what criteria or preconceptions might be used by some judges to determine if someone looks gay enough. Was he supposed to resemble a member of the village people or a character from Priscilla, Queen of the Desert? It's also a bit of a first for Canadian government officials to have an expectation of sexual experience among gay teens, rather than wanting to pretend homosexual desire doesn't exist before the age of majority. And you know, maybe the fact Orozco was housed by church groups in the U.S. made him fearful of expressing his physical sexuality, or the fact that just being a teenager can be a scary time. And it's probably hard to develop intimate relationships when your entire existence is precarious and it may feel impossible to know who you can trust. The government's decision to let Alvaro stay validates that the decision of Lamont, which kept him in a state of insecurity and fear needlessly for the past four years, was a mistake. Do all gay people look the same or live our lives the same way? And who should be considered an expert on who is and isn't queer? Should it be people like Deborah Lamont? or perhaps a consulting body consisting of LGBT people with some knowledge and awareness of the varying cultural contexts, senses of identity, means of self-expression, and risk and danger facing queers from other parts of the world. Just a thought. And here's another thought. It's great that Alvaro Orozco is not going to be deported, but is that any guarantee that what happened to him isn't going to happen to someone else next? For Ravel TV, I'm Sean Sims, and not Rex Murphy.